For the second time, I'm gonna be comparing to a Loud House episode to the Loud House Season 4 episode centered in the round across the Garantis characters. Well, the first time I did it was in my bulk and character development of Lincoln Loud, where I compared to the Greenhouse to the Season 4 episode. Well, the Casagantes did their own version of the Greenhouse, which was much better. And the main reason for that is, is that these two episodes centers around television. Well, mainly TV shows that Lucy enjoys, but the other characters, mainly Laurie and Lenny, get in the way while in the Casagantes. It's Ryan's curiosity that got her very invested with the show that her family is really into. To tell you the truth, I would say that Ryan's position is similar to Lenny and Lori's, but at the same time, Lenny and Lori's obsession with Lucy's TV show is mainly of one person. And while Ryan may be invested in one person, but at the same time, that one person from the Loud House episode is a very hot guy. In The Vampires of Melikaya, well... It has these types of characters that is completely unrelated to the environment of the TV show. Yeah. You know, considering that people have discussed the timeline of this and people just given up, people would speculate that this takes place before the Halloween episode tricked, considering that Lori was a vampire during that Halloween from that episode. But I'm going to be really honest with you, the more I think about it, the more I realize that Lori has multiple crushes in the same ways as Lenny to the point that I'm mostly thinking about how I should take the shipping seriously even though that they're alling and adoring a hot guy from a TV show even though they're not focusing on anything else that Lucy is into. But let's get into the Crossagantes episode. The Casagantes family are watching their favorite show, Adios Ana Adios. Well, Ryan isn't interested in, but she noticed that one of the main characters is just like her, which grew her curiosity to the point that she goes to different places in order to watch the show. And the reason on to why she wants to keep it a secret from her family is mainly the fact that... She just probably finds something in the show that she's actually into while the other characters not really, even though they technically are, which only leads to another problem while she tries to avoid spoilers. You know, to tell you the truth, out of all the times I've seen Wang Yan in these scenarios, with this being part of a season zero, if you want to qualify involving the Casagantes, I'm gonna be really real with you, she really didn't think this through, and since that this is mainly centering around family watching their favorite TV show, did she honestly think that this was never going to happen to all? Because to tell you the truth, this is literally beginner's luck, but not for the right reasons, because it's not that complicated. If you ask me, think about Phantom Pains, it's not a bad episode, nor a bad Lucy episode, but... When you take into t into consideration the fact that Lori and Lenny are portrayed as fangirls who enjoys a hot guy that is in the show that they're not into, I'm gonna be real with you, this actually happens in real life and you know this. Like, you can argue all you want on the fact that Lori has a boyfriend or Lenny is just trying to find a boyfriend, but in all honesty, the reality is that they have multiple crushes and when it comes to a hot celebrity, that appeals in a show that they're not into, they will have no other option but to instantly watch it regardless if it bothers Lucy or not. And since this is a Lucy episode where most of our episodes are divisive, I'm gonna say this right now with her carrying the episodes and just showing what it's like to be a fan of her TV show. To tell you the truth, the fact that Lenny and Lori are just not accustomed to it up until the very end. Just goes to show that Lucy is really mostly the outcast, but not in the Lincoln Loud of being an outcast. With the petition she and the Mosicious Club did in order to get rid of Blank Bradley, who is the guy Lenny and Lori are obsessed with, I'm not gonna lie, 
I would have done the same thing, considering that it has nothing to do with Fan Black Clash. Considering that they're getting new fans that are not into the show itself, it really feels like that the people who are calling fans are just not into the changes and additions that they're not really into. This episode really sums up a lot on how the reality of TV shows include something that people, mainly the audience, just don't like, but this, but that would just gain new audience, n new viewers on being into stuff that they're not really into, which is mainly the show itself. I gotta be really honest with you, I feel bad for Lucy, but at the same time, stuff like this randomly happens, and it's literally the unexpected that really makes newer fans to dive in into the series itself, no matter if it's involving vampires or not. In no show with the Crossagantes, it really gave me the impression that, despite what I stated centering around Wang Yang keeping a secret from her family, it still feels believable that it would take time for her to actually get invested with the TV show in comparison to Lori and Lenny who are mostly hooked because of one hot guy. But I've already addressed this too much, let's, let's just go talk about the Casagrande's episode. Ayos Ana Ayos is one of those Western TV shows which I'm not really a fan of. But when it comes to the Casagantes being Mexican, it makes sense for them to be in joy with this, with this type of show. Because believe me, I reviewed Wound the Twist th two years ago, and it was from a Patreon that is from Australia. And that person enjoys that show because it was from Australia. So it really makes sense for a family like the Casagantes will enjoy a show that is from their culture. And since Wang Yan spent most of her life in Roy Woods up until she moved to the big city, Great Lake City, it really makes sense that she just isn't adjusted to her new home, into her new lifestyle or home style in comparison to Roy Woods. Like, if you're not really into the shows that your family are in and you're getting accustomed to it by time, it really makes sense on how relatable Wang Yan is in this episode, and as much as I understand that Lucy may be relatable in Phantom Pains, it doesn't change the fact that her sisters mostly got in the way. I know it's mainly an obstacle, but the difference when it comes to the obstacles in the Crossagantes episode is the fact that Wang Yan wants to keep a secret from her family that she actually enjoyed the show, which ended up backfiring when most of the citizens had been expressing the finale, which is spoilers towards Wang Yan, only to reveal that they were lying. Because, to tell you the truth, it was bound to happen for one family member to be into a show by time, especially since that Wang Yan has been spending time with her family since moving to Great Lake City. To tell you the truth, my perspective on Lori and Lenny being into the show while also making shirts for not only for themselves but making different types of shirts for Lucy, I understand that this is the type of ending and type of execution when it comes to characters like Lori and Lenny who are just trying to be nice, but to be real with you, I don't hate it. It just really feels like it's way too predictable because I've seen this way way too many times when it comes to a character being nice to another character, which a star is scrolling, which is an episode that I compared to a Kawa episode, Kawaii Chops, back in June, well, the main character is really furious, while the other character is just being nice and doing this for fun. That's basically the same thing here. Granted, this episode came out almost, almost two years before that episode, but considering that they made Lucy a lot more solo when it comes to her episodes of Up in the Musicians Club in the Leo seasons, especially in A Grave Mistake, which I'm gonna talk about way later in the future, it really feels like that they just didn't know how to handle the Lucy's relationships with other characters. Like, the closest may be Lincoln, but that's mainly a coincidence when it comes to Sooth or consequences, since that she was just, since that she was literally the only likable sibling in comparison to the other siblings. And if it is true if this episode took place before Tricked, 
while Lolly is dressed up as a vampire, then I would have felt like that this episode would have been a lot more necessary to see Lowy's obsession on being a vampire, considering of how many fan art there, there was when it comes to Lowy being a vampire. Not to mention that in last year's Loud Test Halloween episode, well, she was a scarecrow. I'm pretty sure there was fan art of that. It really feels like that back in 2017 they wanted fan art for, of involving Lowy being a vampire, but they just didn't think about it, considering that this episode came out about four or five months after Tricked, and they only literally think about how they really wanted the characters, mainly Lori, to be in different costumes. Because believe me, it really feels like that this show wants Lori to be in different costumes once in a while for the sake of doing something good for the audience or give inspiration for artists to draw Lori into different costumes. I'm not sure if that's really true, but that's what I see it when it comes to this episode. In my perspective of these two episodes, the knowledge of a character being into a TV series right away or getting used to by time is really relatable. But to tell you the truth, I found the Cross of Gondis episode a better TV episode in comparison to the Loud House episode. Not to say that the Loud House episode is bad, I just felt like this episode gave me the idea that it was done much more better, especially since that this came out before the Corsagantes have a spin-off, and people say that the season 4 episodes are season 0 episodes of the Corsagantes. For me personally, I think that one of the reasons on to why the season 0 episodes aren't gaining much attention in comparison to the spin-off is mainly the fact that season 4 didn't do the Loud House any favors. With two bad episodes, A Grave Mistake and a, and Kings of the Cons being released a month from each other, I really felt like that that overshadowed the positivity of the spin-off that either came out after Kings of the Con or before that episode. To be perfectly clear with you guys, I really felt like that after doing these videos for almost a year since that we still have December, it gave me the impression that there's always back and forth when it comes to the wide direction of not only not only from the later seasons but also in the Oreo seasons. Believe me, I understand that you may make the argument that seasons one through three are part of the Golden Age or the Savino era, but Whenever I look at it, it really feels like that the people who worked on the later seasons of The Loud House probably watched these episodes, but they took the ideals for the wrong reasons, not the reasons that we are referring to. Sometimes thinking is honestly difficult when it comes into play when you're not expecting these types of things to happen. To tell you the truth, with this show reaching its 8th anniversary, in next May, I really felt like that it's probably going to have a difficult time getting the attention it deserves, especially since that this show just isn't a decade old, and if it's going to continue on longer than necessary, like the Fairy Parents, the only thing we can only hope is that if this show can at least minimal nuance, because the nuance that they have just didn't interest in me, mainly the Lisa episodes. But... Then again, that really shows that when they do something different with the other characters, it just isn't enough. And it's mainly due to poor decisions in the studio. Granted, I've already addressed this multiple times, but I've been doing this since this year began, and five Loud House vs. Cross Gone Days videos from 2022. With that being said, I only have three Loud House vs. Cross Gone Days projects for December, the first and second of Sundays, and the final Sunday, which is also the final day of this year. I'm not sure if it's gonna make a difference considering I'm, gonna, I'm still gonna be making more of these videos in the following year, but at the same time, just to point this out, December is literally the month that got me into the Loud House officially since I started binge watching it in December of 2021. 
And to tell you the truth, with it being two years old, there's slightly a chance that I might get burned out from the show, but I'll just see what I can do. And despite the project involving this, which is a sequel towards the, my Lincoln Loud video, it's not going to happen in 2024, but you never know. It could happen, but at the same time, it will probably be my last video centering around the Loud House vs. Cross of Gondes, but... Then again, I'm not sure. I'm giving Phantom Pains a 6 out of 10, while No Show with the Cross of Gondes gets an 8 out of 10.